just then uh, broadcast and recorded on YouTube on the channel. Um, and we'll, we'll uh, you can find it at the website. Um, and uh, we'll open the uh, meeting and rise with pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I know we all know each other and we're all friends here, but let me introduce the school committee. Ms. King to my right, Mr. Loesch, Ms. Conrad Labarento to my left, Ms. Mainville, Ms. Martelli, Mr. Damarino, myself, Tim Fitzgibbons, and Mr. Powers, the uh, superintendent, and other members of the administration and staff are here. All right, so um, consent agenda. We're looking at approval of minutes, approval of ledger warrants, declaration of surplus books, and acceptance of gifts. Let me call out the gifts, which are great. $3,000 to the Rainwater Players from the Rainham Cultural Council. $605 to the Rainham Middle School from Global Partners. Uh, $100 uh, to La Liberty Elementary School from Rainwater Steam. And uh, Bluestone Bank with an incredible IT donation of $68. Uh, computers and seven laptops. So thank you very much uh, to all of those donors. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Made by Mr. Demarino, second by Ms. Martelli. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, correspondence recognition. Every meeting we try to highlight the uh, topics brought up to us in our school committee. Um, emails and in conversations and so on and I thank Ms. Google for compiling all of these. Uh, we did get a notification um, from Desi that um, the Merrill School was recognized for increasing uh, school attendance and working very hard to make sure all of the students were in school in the prior year. As you know, coming out of COVID, it's been a, a rough go for a lot of folks, and um, we're, uh, we're really happy that we do that. So congratulations to the Merrill School on that one, and to all of the faculty and staff there. Um, we had a email from BCCR, or to our um, Committee for Civil Rights, uh, advocating uh, for restoration of positions, particularly the DEI position. Uh, I know Mr. Powers has obviously uh, been working diligently on the budget that we have and what we can afford, and um, he will certainly keep that in mind, and I know we will certainly keep that in mind. Um, okay, we had a uh, complaint, an open meeting law complaint filed uh, with the Attorney General's office. Sometimes folks may find it hard to attend a meeting or we're not particularly clear um, what happened. And uh, we've had an adjudication from the Attorney General's office, which I'd like to read into the record. Um, and this is to the complainant. I'm not going to name any names. Uh, we understand that on or about February 5, 2024, filed a complaint with the bridgewater Rainham School Committee and Budget Subcommittee alleging a violation of the open meeting law. Our, our office received notification of the complaint and response from the committee on February 16 and February 29, 2024. If a complainant is unsatisfied with the public policies, uh, public body's response and at least 30 days have passed since the complaint was filed with the public body, may request review by our office by filing a copy of the initial complaint with the Division of Open Government. The request for review must generally, generally must be filed no later than 90 days after the date of the alleged open meeting law violation. 
We notified you on March 5, 2024, that if we did not receive the request for review from you by May 5, 2024, we would presume the action taken by the committee was sufficient and would close this file. Our office currently has no record that you requested review of the complaint. Therefore, we now consider this matter closed. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or believe anything stated in this letter to be inaccurate. Just to give some context to this, there was a budget committee meeting and there may have been a bit of a problem with the door and um, I think we've since covered that by posting on which door someone should try and uh, I think we're good there. So uh, going on, we had a proposal from Bridgewater Youth Lacrosse um, to uh, do some upgrades uh, at the Bridgewater Middle School Field Complex, which was a very generous proposal and uh, they are working through with the town manager and the superintendent as to how we could make this happen. Uh, and there are several emails regarding, um, I believe, what's on our agenda tonight from the policy committee around, um, is that on the policy uh, agenda tonight? The, uh, about the and, yeah. or extra yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's on the agenda tonight, so we will be addressing um, does anyone else have anything that they heard? No? Okay, moving on. Um, public comment. Uh, now is the time where we open to public comment. Uh, three minutes apiece, no more than 12 minutes total. Everyone knows the rules, hopefully. If they don't, then uh, don't worry, I'll enforce <laughs> Mr. Ajimian, if you just state your name and uh, address for the right. Yeah, Ray Ajimian, 221, Alder Grove, Bridgewater. Um, I'm pleased to be here. Though. I was just sitting here thinking the last time I was here, maybe 20 years ago, was not a very close time. But I'm pleased to be here today. I am chair of the Bridgewater Tree Committee, which was formed approximately a year and a half, two years ago. One of the things that we did last year was apply to the tree city to become a tree city. And there are a number of requirements to become a tree city. One of them that um, was started was. Well, one of, one of the things we decided to do for our brigade was to have a poster contest. This poster contest was initiated and guided by Nicole Holmes, who I'm not sure whether you know her. She couldn't be here tonight, and she should be, because she's the one that did all the work. And we had a poster contest at the Williamson Intermediate School. Um, one of the students that won the contest, and her name is uh, uh, Tegan McCauley, we chose as the winner of, of the contest for us. And then we applied, then we applied her poster to the statewide contest. I'm happy to inform you that the new DCR calendar for 2025 just came out. And Tegan's poster is February, part of the February. I just want to make sure you're aware of that. And I have an extra copy I'm going to give to you wherever you want. Tegan has one. Uh, her, 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 uh, teacher has one, I'm going to give one to the principal, but I want the school committee to have one also. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Jamie. And any other public comment? Twice, none. We'll move on to administrative and school committee reports. Mr. Powers. Thank you, Mr. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just two quick updates. Uh, the first is very exciting, as you shared. I did receive a correspondence from the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, regarding the achievements of the Merrill School in reducing their chronic absenteeism rates. Uh, just, I did want to share with you before I get into specifics about the Merrill, uh, that as a district overall, uh, DESE has looked at uh, the attendance rates from September through March. They always do an annual comparison from September through March, and then once we do our final uh, data sharing with DESE at the end of the year, they will then update and do it as September through June. Uh, but you're looking at our September through March comparisons this year to last year, uh, we have reduced significantly the number of absences, the average number of absences per student uh, in the 
2022-23 school year, we had an average of 10.3 um, absences per day. Uh, we are now down, uh, down to 5.9. So we are making uh, significant progress there. Uh, if you remember during the accountability presentation, uh, we actually were, uh, all of our schools were awarded their accountability points because they were meeting their targets for um, attendance and reducing chronic absentees. And so overall, we're doing great. However, the Merrill School is actually one of 10 schools across the Commonwealth recognized by the Acting Commissioner uh, for their efforts. Um, Ms. Westell and her staff uh, are so excited to be recognized for their efforts. Uh, as part of that recognition, um, Jesse has partnered with the uh, Boston Celtics, and the Boston Celtics are coming out uh, with Jesse to deliver a signed uh, basketball by the Boston Celtics. So that we're working on scheduling that. Um, one basketball per those 10 schools that were recognized uh, will be handed out uh, to Kev. I saw a screenshot of it, if it's the actual one we get. Uh, it looks like a, a, a kind of a embodied in gold. It's, it's gold with all the signatures, so I assume that's the one uh, we'll receive, but we will certainly keep it in a secure location so it doesn't uh, find its way out to recess and uh, <laughs> <laughs> some shots up there. But I just, I, I know Ms. Westell is so excited and uh, certainly we'll invite her to a future meeting once we kind of have more information as to when the ball is going to be delivered. Um, I think we should want to bring it and share it with you. Uh, but I just want to thank uh, publicly uh, Ms. Westell and congratulate her and her team for, for all their efforts. Uh, the second uh, brief update. I did want to just let you know that we will be bringing in August uh, two proposed calendar changes. Uh, as you know, we always kind of have that uh, asterisk uh, around the calendar once DESE releases their MCAS schedule for the year and when we presented to the school committee, uh, they had not done that as of yet. So there is a conflict on March 26th. It's an early release day. Um, K through eight, uh, it's an early release day for parent-teacher conferences. Uh, high school is going to be an early release day for professional development. We will you know, share more and more detail. Because it is parent-teacher conferences for K-8, we uh, will be proposing that we maintain that as an early release date for those for that level, uh, but make it a full day of school for the high school because they're the ones that have the conflict with, with MCAS. But again, more to come. And also uh, looking at the last day of school for kindergarten, preschool. Um, I think we a lot of them a few extra days to get out early. As you know, uh, we've changed uh, the end date for preschool and kindergarten in the last few years to do the screenings for the following year. Uh, it'll be uh, just allotted a, a couple extra days. So we're going to propose their end date from June 6th through June 10th. But I, I will again share that in more detail. I just wanted to kind of put that out there so you knew that maybe coming in August. And those are my two updates. Questions for the superintendent about this report? Ms. Mando. Um, do you know what contributed to this success? Um, when I hear Well, I, I, I think, you know, speaking specifically to the Merrill and kind of in general terms, I, I would 100% agree with you. I think it's all about the environments that our school, schools are creating, especially how they welcome students in. Uh, if you've been to Merrill uh, or some of our elementary schools in the morning, it, it's quite a show. Um, it, it's almost as though it's, it's uh, you're welcoming the, welcoming the students and families on the red carpet. There's a lot of uh, cheerleading that's going on, a lot of uh, happiness, smiles. Um, and so I think Merrill has really embraced that and has done a, a, a great job of of uh, really working with their families to make sure that they're in school as much as possible. Uh, we certainly know, you know we're still dealing with um, you know, student illnesses and we don't want students or staff to be in school if they're not feeling well. Uh, but I think uh, the trend at all of our schools, we have seen that uh, significant decrease in the number of absences. Uh, and so I just, it, it's again, to your point, it speaks about the environment and how the kids feel coming to school. Anything further, any other questions? Seeing none, we will move on to long range planning report. Uh, Ms. Mendo. So, the long range um, planning subcommittee met twice June 25th and um, July 17th. During the June 25th, 2024 meeting, all members of the subcommittee were in attendance along with Superintendent Powers and the Recording Secretary, Ms. McDougall. This meeting took place in person at the Superintendent's Conference Room. 
During the meeting, we discussed the timeline for updating the student success plan and approval of the superintendent's goals. The committee felt it was important that, the super, that superintendent powers have clear goals that are measurable and aligned with the student success plan to bring to the administrative retreat to assist in updating the student success plan goals for the year. As a result, the subcommittee voted to accept the four goals presented as drafted for further discussion. On July 17th, the committee met virtually. In attendance was Mrs. Um, Davenport, Mr. Luce, um, Superintendent Powers, the reporting secretary, and myself. During the meeting, we discussed and voted on the superintendent's 2024-2025 measurable goals, as well as discussed the responsibilities and timeline for the committee. After reviewing the timeline, it was agreed that we would vote on key action, benchmarks, and evidence for each of the goals in August, and meet in October to review and approve the capital and IT plans. As a result of the subcommittee's vote, I would like to make the following motion. To accept the following four goals, If you could just give the flavor so that folks at home understand what sure. we're talking about. Goal one, student learning goals. 60% of English language learners will meet their DESI established progress target as measured by the 2025 access test. Goal two, professional practice goals. During the 2024-2025 school year, I will engage with at least one student group per month to assess their experience with high quality, equitable instruction and course offerings as well as extracurricular activities in order to ensure that students' voice shapes programmatic decisions and offerings. Goal three, district improvement plan goal number one. During the academic year, I will work with both town government and district staff to identify, advocate for, and secure funding to support our student success plan and the district's mission, excellence in education for all. And finally, goal four, district improvement goal number two. During the school year, in conjunction with Special Olympics and the MIAA, the district will begin to develop a unified sports program for students with disabilities and student partners. Is there a second? I should say in the high school. Is there a second? Mr. Loach seconds. Any discussion? Mr. Loach? Ms. Conrad, what do you I appreciate all the goals and I think they're good. I just have a basic concern on the last goal. I'm 100% for Special Olympics and Unified Athletics in the district. I would just like to say, I think it's a limiting goal. Um, I think thinking about extracurricular inclusion, other sports activities within the district and how we can include our students that are disabled in all of those larger activities and not just limiting to um, the, the unified sports program, unified or special mixed sports program. I just think it's a little limiting um, versus some of the need that's out there right now. Uh, I just suppose. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion or comments, Mr. Demery? No. Yeah, I just have a concern regarding the district. Bridgewater that's going to be getting up to speed with everything. And, um, you know, I, I just feel that you know, where it says secure funding, what is the evidence of that? Is it the same amount as we received last year? More? What happens if the towns have to give less? I think it might be setting up Mr. Powers for uh, failure. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Mr. Demarino and Ms. Conrad Laberto raise um, very good points, and perhaps Ms. Laberto, <coughs> if you'd be amenable to it, I know I'm on the committee, uh, we go back and we can certainly come back with an amendment if we deem it appropriate to these goals, 
based on this input or not and continue to move forward with evidence of measures and so on and so forth. Would that be? No, no, just just a suggestion. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, we could, we could not talk about it in our next meeting is basically what I'm saying. I think they're interesting points to, uh, to consider. Um, I don't want to ask anyone else for fear of creating a quorum of that committee. Um, okay, so no further discussion on this one? All right, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion to adopt these as, as the goals for now. We can always come back and amend them, and that would take another vote. So that last goal should say in the high school. Okay, so we're just that a friendly amendment? Mr. Lewis, do you accept that as a friendly amendment? Ms. McDougall, did you get that? Okay. All right, so um, being it a friendly amendment, we don't need to vote on that. Back to the main motion. All those in favor of the main motion? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So Ms. Conrad Labyrintho and Mr. Demarino are against. Is that what I heard? Anyone else is that you're against? All right, I'm, I'm four, so uh, one, two, three, four, five to two. Uh, it passes, and the library planning committee will continue to work and bring back their work to this committee. Okay. Um, next up on the agenda, budget committee update, Ms. Kay. Second by Mr. DeMarino. Discussion, Mr. DeMarino, anything further? Any further discussion from other committee members? See none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Ms. King, the floor is yours again.
here then for carryover to be brought forward into the 24-25 fiscal year in the amount of $2,099,454.18. Second by Ms. Martelli. Discussion, Ms. Martelli. Any further? Ms. Mango? When I wanted to understand when you say we have to move it over, what does that mean that we have to move it over? Because when I'm thinking that we haven't received the services or paid the invoice. So for instance, if Mr. Schatz orders 20 laptops in January, say, if we do not receive them by June 30th because we're in the back order or for whatever reason they do not come in by June 30th, that purchase order is out there, we have ordered them, we have encumbered that money, we need to move that over to the next to pay that invoice. Um, the, say it's $500,000, whatever that price is, we have to move that over for that open invoice that we've already ordered. So for two million is a lot of money, how many of the activities and the costs fall into what you just described? There's a list here of everything that's on here. Um, Mrs. Babalola, do you want to point out yes. certain things? Mm -hmm. Also, if you look at your packets, there is um, the breakdown of the budget reports in one of the packets. Each line has the encumbrance and preferences that we are carrying over. For example, in the 1000 series, we are carrying over about 49,000. Um, worth of the conferences. Um, that goes across all the uh, cities that we have, so it's not just IT. We have the conferences in the um, facility session, we have the conferences in the transportation session, we have the different categories, different cities. So if you need, if you want to know the flow of each um, amount that we are carrying over per series, I can get that out for you. If I, if I may, if I may, do you, do you, do you want to keep going, Kelly? No, you're, you're the chair. <laughs> no, 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 you're the chair of the budget committee. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's, it's, you know, and for folks watching at home, this is, this is like, it's, um, well, let's call it accrual accounting versus cash accounting, right? We know we have these bills coming. We already, we actually already budgeted for them. Uh, they, they're, 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 they're gonna be coming in to be paid for whatever reason. We haven't gotten the bills yet. Uh, you know, a lot of it here is technology stabilization, site improvement, you know, what we did at Bridgewater. It, it, we put it down at the high school around the parking lot, the tracks, etc. Maybe we haven't paid all the bills yet, etc. But we know they're gonna have to come. And so it, it's just a way of Push it, pushing the money and making sure it's available next year because if we don't, what's going to happen is we get a bill and we don't have a, an account set up for it. Ms. Babalola, you can correct me if I go off on this in any way because I, I'm just going from my experience. We're going to get a bill for it and we don't have a corresponding account to put it against. So then Ms. Babalola is going to have to come to us and say, hey, we bought this stuff in June of 2024, the bills just come in in August of 24. I don't have an account to put it against, so now you're going to have to take it from your E and D or from you know, whatever carryover monies we have. So it's really just a way of pushing what we know we spent, what we said we wanted to spend, to the next year so that it can be properly taken care of and not cause a big paperwork, hassle work for Ms. Bevel. Did I say it pretty yes. correctly? So does that mean we have, the district has benefited from these services, they've benefited and utilized the $2 million, but we just haven't been billed and drawn down the funds? Yeah, so, so think about it like if I, uh, if I, um, I don't know, let's say I got new gutters on my house, just don't tell my wife she wants them. <laughs> Um, and and we, we did it in, uh, we did it in, uh, on June 29th, and the guy said, oh, well, you know, it, it, it came out a little bit more, I'll send you the bill for the difference, because we already paid him a little bit. 
I'll send you the bill for the difference. So I get the bill next week and I pay it. But what we have to do is separate very clearly between June 30th, one fiscal year, and July 1, the next fiscal year. So I've gotten the gutters. I'm all set. I just have to write the check in the next year. I understand you know. that is the amount. I, when I hear $2 million of outstanding monies or we, we haven't canceled these um, invoices or we haven't received the bill, it feels like there's the checks and balances, whether the vendors are not given a deadline to submit those bills or it's just it's the amount. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I understand. I mean, oh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, working in state government for many times, this happens a lot, and state government accounts don't have to be closed out until mid-August, if you will, a lot of times, where school districts don't have that option, is it has to be closed out at the end of June. So if we purchase something in mid-June, all of that money and that invoice, I mean, vendors could turn in a bill 60, 90 days later. Um, and again, not always, but sometimes, depending on their accounting system. Um, I, I think this happens regularly in government. Um, a lot of people don't have to close their books out till later, where school committee schools have to close their books or balance their books and roll that money over to account for that funding into the next fiscal year, if you will. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, some of these items are things that we've ordered and haven't gotten them, but some of them are also items that maybe we've received the service, but the but vendor hasn't them. filled us, so it's mm -hmm. a mixture of a little yeah. both. Yeah. Is that right? Is that in some of the, if I may, yeah. uh, sure. and some of these uh, items also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I you just said. Yes. 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 Everyone's the chair yes. somewhere yes. along the line. Um, <laughs> some of these items also represent, to that point, uh, some of the pre-purchasing we're able to do at the end of the year. Uh, again, as money became available, uh, as we started to close up the budget, we were able to uh, you know, pre-purchase some custodial supplies. Because it was June, we're still waiting for those custodial supplies to come in, but we had to carry that much over. So, to your question about did we benefit from all of the two million dollars? Unfortunately, no. In some cases, to your point, yes, uh, we have received the, the goods and services. Uh, in some cases, projects may have been started later in the spring that are just not complete, and because they're not complete, obviously we have benefited from those, uh, but we had to carry that much over. Well said on that. Thank you for those questions, Ms. Ming. They're very educational for the folks at home, I'm sure. We're still awake. Um, <laughs> and nothing further. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, Ms. Ming bills opposed, so be people five, six to one in favor. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, um, uh, state function code transfers. Uh, next, we have the state function code transfers. At the end of the year, the district needs to transfer within each function code based on our expenditures within each series. Um, but the bottom line does not change. What we certified at the beginning of the year remains the final number. Um, of note, um, of these transfers, there was an increase in the 1000 series uh, for admin and technology. Um, this is due to an increase in technology licenses. Um, there was a decrease in the 2000 series services. Um, this was, we did move some features over to grants and they were reclassified. Um, we also used school choice funds um, for certain features um, and moved some special education over to grants as well. Um, there was an increase in the 3000 series, other student services. Uh, this was an increase um, in transportation services, which was a huge increase. Um, there was a decrease in the 4000 operation and maintenance. Um, this was a decrease based in the utilities um, because of the good weather we had this past um, uh, winter season. There was a decrease in heating costs as well as snow removal. Um, there was a decrease in the 5,000 series fixed costs. Um, some of those health insurance uh, benefits or health benefits rather were moved to grants. Um, there was an increase in the 9,000 series programs with other schools and that was an Thank you. 
budget as follows, um, an increase of $73,494 to the 1000 series admin technology, decrease of $904,820.04 to the 2000 series instructional services, an increase of $1,305,627.91 to the 3,000 series other student services, decrease of $475,052.01 to the 4,000 series operations and maintenance, a decrease of $99,658.67 to the 5,000 series fixed costs, no change to the 7,000 series acquisitions um, and improvement, um, no change to the 8,000 series debt, debt retirement school cons construction, an increase of $100,408.81 to the 9,000 series programs with other schools. Is there a second? Second. Same by Ms. Conrad Labyrintho. Ms. Conrad Labyrintho discussion. Any other discussion from the school committee on this? I don't quite understand. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Loesch first and then Ms. Baker. Uh, we, we do have that information. I don't have it here. Um, uh, approximately, uh, I want to say there was about four or five teachers uh, that were able to move over a grant, either to one of the special education grants or over to ESSER three. Um, we were able to move some of the paraprofessionals and proctors uh, to one of the special education grants. And then um, we also reclassify, uh, I believe it was two teacher salaries over to Title I. And then also charge $250,000 250, worth of high school salaries to school choice. Uh, but I didn't get to that breakdown. And then obviously it wasn't all salaries. We had we did have somebody left over in you know textbooks and goods and other services that we were that represents that. Ms. Mayfield. Um, so the decrease in the salaries that we utilities you talked about is we project at the beginning of the year what we think the cost is going to be based on prior year and whatever the forecasters tell us um, but based on like we had last year we had good weather so we didn't use all that money that we set aside to cover the heat and the electric so now we move so we have a decrease in that funding we can move those costs to other Again, in terms of being able to move some of those positions to grants, one of the challenges uh, is that DESE doesn't always release their grants prior to the start of the new fiscal year. And so for budgeting purposes, we don't really know what we're going to get. So our Title I, Title II, Title III, Title IV, special education grant, they fluctuate from year to year. And so we know that maybe last year we were able to charge you know, two to three teacher salaries to Title I. We're just never really sure what we're going to be able to charge this year until the grant has been released. So even for this uh, coming fiscal year, or the one that we're currently in now, DESE hasn't released those grants yet. So we really don't know what uh, we're going to receive for funding. So that's why we have to make sure these positions can be accounted for in the operational budget. Once we get that funding, then we, we know what we have and then we're able to, to move that over. I guess my struggle is to, in one hand, we heard we got to transfer $2 million over to the next year. And then in this conversation, we're transferring monies in and out of the accounts. Um, I, I do struggle with the format that this information is provided in and would ask maybe in the future
sure we could use something that has like some pie charts that you can parse so that visually, um, at least for visual learners like myself, understand how all these things tie in together to see this holistic picture. Because right now it's just a running list of numbers and in one place we have two million that wasn't spent and needs to transfer and then here we're talking about moving things within the line. So at least for me, it, it, it's very abstract and it doesn't tell a, a cohesive story. And I imagine if I'm here and I've attended the budget meeting and I'm on the, I, I'm sure the community would struggle to absorb this information and interpret it as well. That's a very fair point, Ms. Mainville. Uh, but I think one, one way I'd sum it up is the pie is the same size pie as it was at, when we adopted the budget. It just cut into different slices, and that's basically what you're saying is, show me the different slices, if you will. So if we thought we were going to spend X million on teachers, now we're spending this much, then it moved over this slice of the pie. But the pie doesn't change, which is the key thing that I think Ms. King was trying to say, is we have to make sure that, right, Ms. King? Thank you. What a great suggestion. Thank you. All right, further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. I'm abstaining. Oh, abstain, okay. Um, all right. And that's it for the budget committee. Am I correct, no. Ms. King? No. No, one more. Uh, the last uh, motion I have is the technology stabilization transfer. Um, Mrs. Benalola brought forward a recommendation to transfer 100000 to the IT stabilization fund. This has been built into budget the past several years to support the district's one-to-one -one implementation, um, and we historically put 250 to 350,000 into that stable, into that stabilization fund. Um, Mr. Powers indicated that this year they're gathering information while we continue while we continue to use the one-to-one. -one, um, we haven't moved away from textbooks either, um, so I really would like us to maybe with Mr. Shams this year and see do we continue as we're doing in a fully one-to-one -one at all grades like we're doing or rather at the middle school and up um, do we continue to be both to do both and fund both um, and I'll personally both middle and high school my kids are still using textbooks we haven't moved away but they are still using the technology um, but do we continue to fund it at a one-to-one -one? Um, in order to fund that one-to-one about $350,000 to $400,000 per year. Um, if we do not find any grants, which I know Mr. Shams has been great at finding grants to find it the past several years with all of the ESSA grants, et cetera, but we don't know that if that's going to continue. Um, the current balance in that IT stabilization account is $634,350.06. So we have enough right now to sustain that, um, but going forward, we will need to on that if that's the direction that we're going to do. Um, so with the re recommendation of Mrs. Babalola for 100,000, um, I'm also, as we discussed that during budget, to go with that for this year um, <coughs> and look into do we continue doing that or do we bring it down to a smaller amount. Um, so Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the transfer of 100,000 from the fiscal year 24 budget to deposit into the Second by Mr. Damarino. Discussion, Mr. Damarino. Any other discussion? Ms. Mayfield. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I might have missed it. How, what's the spending rate for that grant? Like, how much are we spending? So, if we do the fully one to one <coughs> as we've been doing, which means we give every incoming fifth grader, every incoming freshman, <coughs> Um, so last year we were able to secure a grant to cover our one-to-one -one program. That grant totaled six hundred thousand. Um, but now um, next year there there won't be grants available, 
So we're going to have to rely on either that stabiliz stabilization account or, or the budget. like a four-step process between registration, all of the tests that you need to get. 
get done prior um, paperwork, and then the athletic fee comes after once the sport has started. Um, and no action was taken. Uh, we did not approve minutes at that meeting. The June 12th minutes were pushed to the following meeting. Um, we did have also Ms. Mainville had emailed and requested some budget information as to the last five years of the operating budget and the percentage of unspent funds. Um, Ms. Babalova first here here requested information in a spreadsheet which was reviewed by the budget subcommittee in draft form. As fiscal year 24 is still not closed out yet. Um, the budget subcommittee reviewed the spreadsheet and Mr. Powers provided context um, also specifically for fiscal year 2020 and fiscal year 2021 which were COVID years and we were in receipt of after funds and grants. Um, also to know we did since those two years we did have an excess of money due to grants those were not able to really be used for staffing positions other than one year appointments um, as once you work those into the budget you, if the funds are out there such as the past year we've had um, those positions for the um, and then fiscal year 24 out of the five years was the leanest year we have had um, that information was in the packet as well um, otherwise we did have others in the fiscal year 24 budget differences. Ms. Robichaud also pointed out um, some the high school parking fees were higher than anticipated. We did ask her to look into that to review was it the number of parking spaces has increased? Are we budgeting accurately for the parking fees? Um, Etc. Um, she also indicated that the Medicaid revenue came in higher as the business office had made a concerted effort to submit all necessary claim paperwork for all available reimbursements. Um, the next budget subcommittee meeting was scheduled for Monday, August 12th, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Um, unless you have any questions, that concludes my Questions on the rest of the report? Uh, I, right, um, I, I know Subcommittee meeting met uh, right before this meeting, Wednesday, July 24th, at 6 30. Uh, attendance were this is Conrad Labarento, Mr. Loesch, myself. Uh, as discussed at the last meeting, we looked at the concussion policy, athletic concussion regulations, per request from our athletic trainer at the high school, Mr. Smith. Changes were made in accordance with the change in uh, procedure that uh, the medical profession has engaged in, which is uh, baseline testing is no longer mandatory, it's voluntary. Uh, we made changes to that policy to reflect that. Most of it was changing will to may, indicating that baseline testing was voluntary. motion to approve the revised <coughs> concussion policy uh, per what was discussed. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Loesch. Uh, I'm sure you'll take this as a friendly amendment, Mr. Demerino. Sure. But uh, in section two, mechanism of in injury, um, about midway through the paragraph, it talks about the site of impact. It's not what's viewed. It's the actual place, so we should change that word to SIT. That is a friendly. Uh, 
Yes, that is right. All right, thank you. Uh, I have no other questions. Questions for Mr. Damarino? No. All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous, thank you. All right, anything further, Mr. Damarino? Uh, actually, I think I have rephrased the motion because I need to request to be the first reading. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody wants to sit here while I read 13 pages of the uh, policy. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, well. I just realized that. And I, my apologies, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, we'll take that as a motion and, and I'm driving. Mr. Lewis, we'll second. second. <laughs> All those in favor of waiving the reading, say aye. Aye. All right. Do we have to go back? Do we go to it? Yeah. All right. Anything further from the uh, Just to update meeting. regarding the last meeting, uh, we did take into consideration drafting a policy to permit uh, community members that are no longer enrolled in our district participate uh, in extracurricular activities, uh, specifically the request involved uh, members of, potential members of the VR high school marching band. Uh, the policy committee decided, voted and decided not to take up that and create a policy in regards to that. There was a lot of uh, discussion and emails regarding that. So I'll, I'll just ask you and or the superintendent, what does that mean effectively for those students this coming year? Uh, so at this point, we are not allowing a non vr student to participate in extracurricular activities. Okay. Uh, as I share. I, I just wanted to. Yeah. I just want everyone to be clear in the audience and at home. And, and I think, Mr. Fitzgibbon, some of it, like Mr. Powers explained to us too, from further research, is our library, our insurance is not covered. Students are not enrolled in the district. Okay. And it would be an additional cost if we had to cover those students to us. Um, so. Okay. Mr. Loge? Um, I was going to ask Mr. Loge, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I just, I think, you know, we have programs like this within the district to keep students here and attraction for them to attend here and not to go out to other places. Every time a student leaves our district, it has a financial impact on our ability to provide for them in the district. Uh, so I think uh, it has multiple areas of impact beyond the liability insurance and how we can provide for our students within the district. Okay. Ms. Martel. Just uh, home school students does, does not impact them. So if they still participate. Correct. Because they're enrolled in the district. Correct. They are under the guidance of the district. They have to get approved for their school. For the discussion on the policy committee report. Seeing none, we'll move on to personnel update. Thank you for coming. Questions for Ms. Healy? I have a question. Ms. It may be too Robert. early to ask this question, but where are we in Philly? I know a lot happens between now and the end of August, um, but where are we in trying to fill these positions? How many positions do we have open? Where are we trying to fill these positions? I mean, we can't answer exact, but I right, but approximately. Um, so we have uh, like a couple offers out for um, for. Down. 
classroom uh, too. So uh, in terms of adding staff to those those programs, but we're able to move some internal staff around uh, to fill some of those openings. We had a leave of absence, special education that we were interviewing for. So I think we're three left, I think, yeah, we're not in terms of certified uh, right positions. And we have some custodial staff that are Thank you, Ms. Healy. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on to new business. Uh, I'm going to let Ms. Martelli speak the service now. Uh, we're going to look at the approval of warrants payroll dated June 13, June 27, and July 11, 2024. Is there a motion to approve? Made by Ms. King. Second by Mr. Tamarino. Discussing Ms. King. Mr. Tamarino. Have a discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Thank you, Ms. Vitelli. Please uh, hopefully can come back. All right. Announcements and items to be considered for future agendas. Uh, as always, please email me, Superintendent, and Ms. McDougall, especially Ms. McDougall, if you want something. Um, and, and we'll do that. I don't have any announcements. Does anyone else have any announcements? I just have a quick one, Mr. Dickens. Ms. Conrad so Alberto. People know in the audience, and I'm sure it'll come out in the last, and still starts to come back. Um, special, special Education Parent Advisory Council um, has had some struggles over the past few years. They do have a new board that's elected. They had 25 people at the first meeting in August and elected a new board, so um, uh, they are back. I would encourage anyone uh, who has access to Facebook to look on the on the CPAC website that Special Education's Parent Advisory Council. Um, they they do a lot of good work helping the district. It's a uh, very important uh, group to the district, um, and they need all the involvement they can get because that allows them to be more proactive in, in the community. Any other? Uh, Announcements? Seeing none, we'll move on to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Made by Mr. Gamarino. Second. Second by Ms. Martelli. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. We